Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to Shloka Day. Today, Shloka is Shloka 26 of chapter 18. Mukta Sango Naham Vadi. Mukta Sango Naham Vadi. Vrityutsaha Samanvitaha. Vrityutsaha Samanvitaha. Siddhya Siddhyor Nirvikaraha. Sitya Sitya Nirvikaraha Karta Satvika Uchyate Karta Satvika Uchyate Word for word meaning translation and purport by His Divine Grace Shila Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Mukta Sangaha Mukta Sangraha Liberated from all material association Liberated from all material association. Anaham vadi. Anaham vadi. Without false ego. Without false ego. Dhriti. Dhriti. With determination. With determination. Utsaha. Utsaha. And great enthusiasm. And great enthusiasm. Samanvitaha. Samanvitaha. Qualified. Qualified. Siddhi. Siddhi. Imperfection. Imperfection. Asidhyo. Asidhya. Asidhya. And failure. And failure. Nirvikaraha. Nirvikaraha. Without change. Without change. Karta. Karta. Worker. Worker. Satvikaha. Satvikaha. In the mode of goodness. In the mode of goodness. Uchyate. Uchyate is said to be. Is said to be. Translation. One who performs his duty. One who performs his duty. Without association. Without association. With the modes of material nature. With the modes of material nature. Without false ego. Without false ego. With great determination and enthusiasm. The great determination and enthusiasm. And without wavering in success or failure. And without wavering in success or failure. Is said to be a worker. Is said to be a worker. In the mode of goodness. In the mode of goodness. So let's look at the trajectory of chapter 18 again. So we are in the section of shlokas 18 to 40 where Krishna is talking about the jnana of a karma yogi. And this entire section talks about the three modes. So we have talked from 20 to 22. Krishna talked about knowledge being influenced by the three gunas. So from 23 to 25, Krishna talked about action being influenced by the three gunas. Here, in 26 to 28, Krishna is talking about the worker, the doer, the actor being influenced by the three gunas. So let's look at <clears throat> what Prabhupada writes in the purport here. A person in Krishna consciousness is always transcendental to the material modes of nature, which means anybody who is practicing Krishna consciousness whether you're a beginner or whether you've been doing it for several months or several years or for your entire life, then you have transcended the three gunas. Why? Because he has no expectations for the result of the work entrusted to him. Because he is above false ego and pride, still he is always enthusiastic till the completion of such work. He does not worry about the distress undertaken. He is always enthusiastic. <clears throat> so somebody who is practicing Krishna consciousness is always eager to do their seva. They don't worry upfront whether they are going to succeed or not. And even if they don't succeed, they don't get dejected. He still pushes on, right? So this is the mood of a devotee who is always enthusiastic. He does not care for success or failure. He is equal in both distress and happiness. Such a worker is situated in a mode of goodness. So what is interesting is, uh, Prabhupada is not distinguishing the shloka between 
शुद्ध सत्व एंड सत्व गुण इफ यू आर इन शुद्ध सत्व गुण यू आर अ प्योर डोटी इफ यू आर इन द सत्व गुण यू मे बी प्रैक्टिसिंग साधका who has still not achieved that krishna prema yet so from another parampara shri krishna had earlier mentioned the three ingredients of action knowledge the action itself and the doer so now having described the categories of two of them knowledge and actions he now moves on to three kinds of performers of actions he clarifies that those situated in the mode of goodness are not inactive rather they work with enthusiasm and determination the difference is that their work is performed in proper consciousness satvik doers are mukta sangha that is they do not try to cling to things in worldly attachments nor do they believe that worldly things can bestow satisfaction to the soul hence they work with noble motives and since their intentions are pure they are filled with utsah zeal or determination enthusiasm and dhriti dhriti means strong resolve in their endeavors their mental attitude results in the least dissipation of energies while working you that means the workers who are under the influence of the mode of goodness can do things very efficiently because they are not distracted so they can do things in a shorter period of time than perhaps others can so that is why the sentence is saying their mental attitude results in least dissipation of energies while working thus they are able to work tirelessly to fulfill their sublime motives though they may accomplish great things they are anahambadi free from egotism and they give all credit for their successes to god so we can understand what is the mood of devotees a genuine devotee will be full of determination full of enthusiasm ready to do whatever it takes always ready to serve uh, so they are not uh, slow they are very determined they are very enthusiastic and they finish their seva efficiently so so does it mean that people in sattva gun are slow and do they calm and all of that so let us look at what his grace chaitanya charan prabhu says so life in goodness is not life in slow motion as we live in a fast paced passionate culture life in the mode of goodness can seem unappealing if i have to always think things through before acting on them won't that take all excitement and thrill out of my life won't it reduce my life to a permanent slow motion not at all the bhagavad gita 18.26 states that those who work in goodness are permeated with enthusiasm utsaha samanvitah enthusiasm implies verb energy spirit not the attributes of a life in slow motion the picture of goodness as life in slow motion is a caricature conjured by our stereotyped misconceptions about what goodness really is earlier the gita 14.11 mentions that the hallmark of goodness is illumination of the senses that is when in goodness we can clearly perceive the kinds of sensory engagements that are beneficent and the kinds that are maleficent so when you are in the mode of goodness as an actor your discriminatory power especially when you are practicing krishna consciousness is very clear you know what is right you know what is wrong uh, you don't have to uh, muddle your head about whether what i am doing is right or wrong intuitively the lord is through your <clears throat> heart and consciousness telling you what is right and what is wrong in the sense what is beneficial for you and what is not beneficial for you our senses usually act as the pathways for our journey of life we frequently turn towards those things that our senses find appealing and turn away from those things 
that our senses find appalling. Appalling means sir, disgusting. Living in goodness implies ensuring that we invest the time necessary to look beyond appearances. We choose our direction based not on how a path looks, but on where it takes. Once we calmly ascertain that the destination is the right one for us, we take off enthusiastically, speedily even, as long as we stay on track and don't quote unnecessary danger. When we are good at doing certain things, we can do them fast and still stay in goodness because the speed doesn't distract our focus from why we are doing what we are doing. Goodness doesn't make a virtue out of slowness. Its central concern, after all, is not velocity of motion, but clarity of direction. So goodness has nothing to do with speed in and of itself. It has to do with clarity of direction. And when there is clarity of direction, that efficiency and speed automatically come in. Right? Of course, efficiency and speed also comes because of practice. So if we're not practicing uh, Krishna consciousness, and if we're not practicing so many different sevas that we're engaged in, then how will that speed and efficiency come? So practice is also an important element of experiencing that success of efficiency, determination, enthusiasm, etc. So Krishna is here in the next three shlokas, 26, 27, 28, is talking about the karta. Karta means the person who's doing the activity. And how are they influenced by the three modes of nature, which is Satvagun, Rajagun, and Tamo. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification. If you'd like to join our classes every day, please check the details in the description section of this video. We look forward to serving you.